friends, I am H.O. Montek, and I have been working on a project for the Glowforge. I don't know if you're like me, but when the Glowforge first came out on the Kickstarter, I saw the globe that was cut out of cardboard, and I was hooked. That has been my dream medium since I got it. So, what I did today was I designed a castle in Tinkercad, sliced it using a special technique I'll show you in a bit, and right now I'm going to hot glue it together, and let's see what we get. All right, friends, so right now you are looking at the work plane in Tinkercad, and you're looking at the very top of my castle. So that the top of the castle, when I created an SVG, would have one-piece rings, I added these little orange pieces, and then I grouped them. And then all I did was I exported this one piece as an SVG. I mentioned that work plane because if you don't have your design down on the work plane, your SVG will be empty, which is an important step that I had to learn. I'm going to back up and ungroup this though. So if I click on the red and I ungroup, all of a sudden you can see my two slicing blocks and you can see the entire castle that is below the work plane. The work plane layer is simply this part I just showed you. So when I group it, all of a sudden we've got the part that I need as an SVG for the last piece of the puzzle. All right, so let me take you back to how I sliced this entire project. The first thing I did was I took this piece and I put it all the way down to zero. And then I knew that my cardboard was six millimeters thick, so I'm gonna drop this piece down to zero. And then this is where it was kind of cool. If I set the work plane to the side of the building or the side of the block, if I tap the up arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can then group those items and I am looking at a top down view of my first section. So then I simply exported that piece as an SVG and I've got a folder where I called that 01. Once I was done saving the first one, I just clicked on my part, ungrouped it. And then I clicked on my castle and I moved it down six pieces. So here I am just using, I'm going to look at it from the front so you can see this real well. This is the down arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now when I zoom out and I group the project again, I am left with what would be layer two of the project. And I simply exported that SVG as well. I did that all the way through the entire project ending up with the 16 files that you see right here. And then in the end, I'm gonna just hide these, so I'm just teaching you quick a Tinkercad skill. And I ended up with a cool castle that was supposed to say HL Mod Tech on this side, but that's hard to read. It does have a cool little entryway, and on the other side, it'll have the Glowforge. And then up here it's got the rings and then also this cool piece on top so it actually looks like I've got defenses. If you're deciding to build something like this, uh, having the idea of making sure every layer is going to have a flat edge is smart. Uh, I missed the idea of the flat edge on this uh, when I did the SVG. So I just opened that SVG and I added a stick across so that ended up being a one piece part. And then I did the trick up here, you can see with the rings. If you've never built in Tinkercad before, check out the HL Mod Tech YouTube channel. I have got playlists and videos to help you learn just about anything you want in Tinkercad. If you have questions, you can ask them down below and I'll teach you just about anything. All right, so here you can see the design. As I was working through the temperatures, um, I, I changed them the entire time I did the project. Initially, I did not cut all the way through. So I'm going to have to go through and slice all these quick, um, at least the first bunch, and then eventually they'll come through the right size. All right, let's talk for a minute about cardboard before we go any further. Uh, this is special cardboard. It was a 3D printer box, which is kind of ironic that I am using a 3D printer box to laser cut. It was shipped from overseas, so they have a stronger box to try and make it get here safely.
you can see the cardboard in this project. An earlier one of mine, the laser cut flyer, was much less sturdy than the printer box cardboard. That may have been a bonus though since I was trying to make an airplane instead of a sturdy castle. You can see in this view just how much stronger this cardboard is going to be. The other thing I did not plan for, which caused me a lot of hassles, I did not plan for the locations where there were packing tape on the back or labels. That also made cutting through much more difficult so then I had to cut those with an X-Acto knife which is highly overrated when your whole project is built using an awesome laser cutter. Alright so here you can see the design. As I was working through the temperatures um, I, I changed them the entire time I did the project. Initially I did not cut all the way through so I'm going to have to go through and slice all these quick. Um, at least the first bunch and then eventually they'll come through the right size. So here's what I've got for you so far. Um, if you ever build one of these, make sure you've got your settings right before you start. Because it took me one, two, three, four, five, six, six layers before I got to where I can just peel off the pieces. And it is a much more fun project when the uh, parts just come apart. Uh, that cutting with an X-Acto knife, highly overrated. So getting closer to being able to glue it together and ha uh, show you what it was. But, uh, <laughs> it's starting to look like a castle. There's the entrance. Alright, we are finally in hot glue mode. Uh, some things I learned, which I already knew. Uh, numbering them was brilliant. Uh, there were a couple spots where I had them out of order, but quickly put them back because of the numbers. I'm going to just tack this together because it's just for fun. This one came in at a different size. I don't really know how, but I don't terribly care. It's still going to turn out pretty cool. Um, if I think back to the globe, it had cool texture everywhere. So if I'd have been thinking of that when I built it, that would have been pretty sweet. But castles are fine straight up and down too. Woo, there goes the hot glue. All right, I'm gonna flip that upside down and put them on one at a time. my friends is the Glowforge Castle. Perhaps my favorite part, I cut in a GF on the other side. Nothing on the back. On this side I tried to put HL Mod Tech, but that's pretty hard to read. I can see the HL. There's the mod and then that was an attempt at tech. So friends, it is possible to make cardboard castles using Tinkercad, your Glowforge, and some cardboard. Lots of lessons that I learned. Make sure you use cardboard that doesn't have a backing. Make sure you have it dialed in ahead of time. It was so easy pulling apart these last few sections and when I had my numbers set right. Uh, it's super important that you have that figured out if you're going to enjoy the entire experience. So friends, it took me about a day. But uh, I do have a cardboard castle, and I am pleased with it. Uh, this may be something I have my kids do at school. Uh, it's a pretty neat project. I mean, to be able to take something free, laser cut all the pieces, and bam, assemble it when you're done. Not a bad game. Uh, if you found this video useful, friends, please hammer that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. If you've got a question or a comment, leave it down below. If you've got an idea for what I should create next, share that as well. If you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from me, HL Montech, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, friends. Have a great day.